Hey, did you just get one of these? Or maybe one of these? Maybe one of these? Or maybe even one of the... No, not those. But you don't know where to start? Well, generally the configuration is a good place. How's it going guys? I'm Brick with AM Sports and today we're gonna to be talking about basic configurations in Race Studio 3. We're not gonna go into great detail on this one, but I am gonna give you everything you need to know to get a configuration up and running. And of course, we are gonna start by going into Race Studio 3. If you don't already have this program, there is a link down in the description to go get it. Go get it. Time out real quick. I just want to point out before we keep going for the US, Liberia, and Myanmar, the three countries that still use the Imperial system, Race Studio 3 defaults to metric. So you might just want to go up here to the wrench and screwdriver icon, click on language and unit preferences, and then that'll give you this window right here where you can set up all the units of measure that you want to use. Then just click OK and we can keep going. So we'll start by going up here to the configurations button. We'll just click on that. That will take us to this page and you're just gonna click on new configuration. That'll bring up this window where you select which unit you're using. And just for example, if you have a, let's say an MXS 1.2, make sure you click the configuration that says MXS 1.2 or 1.3 rather than just the one that says MXS. If you don't have the exact right device selected, it's not gonna let you transmit the configuration. So in this example, we're just gonna use an MXS 1.2, but just keep in mind that depending on which unit you're using, some of the features and tabs might not be available for the configuration in your device. All right, so I'm just gonna open up this MXS test configuration that I have going here. And you'll see up here in the top left, uh, we'll have two tabs. So that's the configuration I just opened. If you need to go back, you can hit the all configurations and that's gonna take you back to this page. So the first tab is gonna be the channels tab. This is where all the analog inputs are. This is also where you'll find GPS channels, accelerometer channels if you have them, as well as a few other internal channels. Another important thing to note here is that any of these channels that have no check in the box next to them, that channel is not being logged. So if you want to be logged, put a check in the box. The first channel you'll see up here is our analog RPM input. Now this is not to be confused with an ECU RPM channel, which some of you may have available. Usually you would use one or the other, but not both. The next couple channels will be speed channels. These are usually used for a wheel speed sensor, but could also be used for a shaft RPM or maybe even a turbo RPM. The next thing we have is channels one through eight. Now these are analog channel sensors. These are gonna be a sensor going directly to your data logger. There are some third party options for sensors. Plus we have the ability to do custom sensors. Typically these are gonna be used for aim sensors though. Things like oil pressure, water temperature, brake pressure, suspension travel, all that good stuff. To set up one of these channels, all you have to do is double click it. We're gonna set up brake pressure just as an example. So we'll call this brake press. Next, we'll go to the function and we're gonna select pressure and then brake circuit pressure. We're just gonna go with our most commonly used brake pressure sensor. So if we click on the sensor, we'll go to zero to 2000 PSI. Then the sampling frequency, that's just the number of times per second that we're sampling that channel. And you can select your unit of measure. We're going with PSI because Merca. And then we just click save. So now you can see here, we've got our brake pressure sensor set up. So in this part probably goes without saying, but on the hardware side of things, whatever channel you're actually plugging these sensors in, make sure that corresponds with what we're setting up in the channels here. All right, next is gonna be the ECU stream tab. So if you have a compatible ECU that we can get information from, this is where you'll set that up. Are you unsure if you have a compatible ECU? Don't worry, I got you real quick. We'll just go to aimsports.com. We'll click documentation up here at the top. Under ECU connections, we'll select either stock or racing. Racing would be if you have an aftermarket ECU. So we'll just say for this instance, we have a 2012 GTI. So we'll click stock. We'll go to Volkswagen. We'll go to sixth generation, 2008 through 2012. And that's gonna open up our documentation on the ECU. So here you'll find what model cars it's compatible with, a little information about how it's wired. It'll also have the channels that we expect to get, but what we're after is this information right here. So this tells us which manufacturer and which model to select. Now we'll go back into our ECU stream tab. We'll go down to the manufacturer Volkswagen and select VW group. Now we have all of these lovely channels coming from the ECU that we can use. Next up is the CAN2 stream. So we'll go to that. This is where you can add a secondary CAN device. Usually it's gonna be a third party device. For this example, let's just say we're using a Flagtronics electronic flagging system and we just wanna incorporate that into our data. So we can go down here, pick Flagtronics. Now we have a flag code that's being sent to our data logger, which means that we can actually record which flags are currently out and we can even set alarms based on those flags. How cool is that? Next up is the CAN Expansions tab. Now this is for AIM CAN Expansions, so that's gonna cover things like the LCU-1, channel expansions, and shift light modules. That's where you can add those. After that, we have the Math Channels tab. This is where we can calculate 
break bias. We could add or subtract one channel value from another, and we can add gains and offsets to channels. The other really cool thing we can do is a calculated gear channel. So we can actually get gear position without even having a gear position sensor. Now we're on to status variables tab. So status variables make it so we can set parameters for keeping track of certain conditions. So for example, the one that I've set up here is for a hard breaking condition. So I've named it hard break. We're sampling at 50 hertz. You can choose to log or not log the channel. So we've set it up so that if brake pressure is greater than 600 PSI, RPM is greater than 1000 RPMs, GPS speed is greater than 20 miles per hour. If all of those things are true, then this channel is going to go from a zero to a one or from false to true. So once we have this set up, we can then log this channel for a review later. We can also use it to base real time alarms on to alert the driver. Next up is the parameters tab. This is where you will set up lap detection. That is almost always going to be GPS based. We can also set the recording conditions. So these are the criteria that need to be met in order for your data logger to start recording. On a lot of devices, standard conditions are going to be anything over 850 RPMs or six miles an hour, but you can also set up your own custom conditions if you want to do something different. On to the shift lights and alarms tab. So with some of our devices, you'll be able to use these LEDs up at the top as either a predictive time or you can use them as shift light indicators. You can also click on the gear icon right here to set some of the parameters for your shift lights and change the RPM values. We can also set up alarms from this page. So just click the add new alarm button right there and then you can select the parameters that you want to trigger the alarm. And depending on which device you have, you may have a few different options as far as what to actually trigger. So in some you can do a message a pop-up message, an LED, an output signal, a number of different options there, but LED is gonna be the most common. So the example I just set up is for high water temp. So we just have the ECU water temp channel is greater than 210. It's gonna trigger the following actions. We're gonna have LED one, fast blinking, red, until the condition is no longer met. Then we'll just click save. So you can see we've got the alarm here. All right, so our next tab is gonna be the commands tab, and this is where you can set up things to trigger certain actions. Probably the easiest example of this is with a reverse cam, which I've already set up. And we have, if all of the following actions are true, so gear equal to reverse, then trigger the following actions, and we have that set to first camera input. So that's gonna make it so that when we put our car in reverse, that's gonna trigger the first camera input to come on. The next tab is gonna be the icons manager. This is just where you will find and manage some of the more factory style icons that some of our devices are able to use. All right, the next tab is gonna be the display tab. This one's actually pretty important because you can't send a configuration to your unit without having at least one display page set up. To add a new page, we'll just click this add new page button up at the top. And then this is all gonna be somewhat personal preference, but just choose a layout that you like. We'll go with this one. You can see we can have multiple pages set up at once. Over here on the left hand side, we're going to have an example display and you can click to select each data field. Then down here in the bottom right, we can choose which channel we want displayed in that field. Right there, we're going to choose one of our analog channels. We'll put our brake pressure right there. You can also choose lap channels lap time right there, so on and so forth. Another cool thing is we can also do things like changing color and font. So we'll select this one, change it from purple to a nice bright green. And we can also change the font, that's pretty cool. Some of these data fields also have further configuration that we can do down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So RPM, for example, currently this tachometer is set to a max of 14,000 RPM. That's a little high for most people. So we'll go down here and we'll change it from 14 to eight. That's a little more reasonable. So yeah, this tab, you just gotta play around with a little bit, figure out what you like, what you don't like, get it set up, set up the pages you want, go from there. Next up, we are going to the Smarty Cam stream. So if you're using your data logger in conjunction with the Smarty Cam, just select which Smarty Cam you're using up here at the top, either the two or the three. So this list right here is basically just telling the data logger what information to send over to the Smarty Cam. That information can then be used in the overlay for the video. In most cases though, just click this box up here at the top. This enables all the channels to be sent over to the Smarty Cam. And lastly, we have our Can Output tab. So this can be pretty complicated and is definitely a video for a different time. The basic rundown here is that you are able to set up CAN messages to be sent out from your data logger to another CAN device. And that's the basic rundown. So at some point, like I said, we will probably do some videos that focus on each individual tab and break it down a bit further. But for now, hopefully that's enough to get you rolling. If you found this helpful, make sure you hit the like button. I also hear there's a subscribe button down there you can click if you wanna see more. If you have any suggestions or if you just wanna let us know we're doing a great job let us know down here in the comments make sure you follow us on instagram at aim sports data we'll see you next time bye bye